Okay, so I guess we can get started. Uh, yeah, we got a good turnout today. Um, so, uh, agenda. Uh, we have a, a bunch of things, um, starting with, I thought it would be useful for us to um, sort of run down the list of what the current viewer release candidates are in case anybody had any just as a reg as a matter of regular things here, um, in case anybody had some any issues with any of them that they wanted to discuss. And this week, the first one on our list is uh, is represented here by a very special guest, uh, Marov. And uh, so I'll let I'll let him take the floor for for any discussion we have about that. Oh wow, okay, so yeah. <laughs> I expect you to put me on the spot, but uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> so as you certainly know, uh, we released a new uh, fewer uh, new project called SL Shell, uh, and that the repo has been made public, of course, and it's available there. Uh, basically, what it is is uh, a new panel that allows people to post from the viewer to Facebook uh, in, a, in a very uh, simple and convenient way to Facebook to their account. So this is a, um, an opt-in only um, uh, feature when I'm posting on the behalf of users without them consenting or anything like that. It's not a spamming device. Uh, and um, I'm not getting much of this. So you're not getting much of this if you don't want to. Hmm? I'm being told that my mic is breaking up a bit, so uh, sorry about that. And um, so, uh, yeah, from the solution standpoint, it's a pretty straightforward thing. There's not a lot of code into the viewer attached to that. Most of the code is actually the server side on the ABC service, uh, which is hosted by our server. And um, so that's it. So we play with it. Uh, let me know if you have any question about it. I think the integration should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, what did you say? I didn't understand yeah, but the word. I'll, uh, I, I should, I should uh, get on with you separately and test your, test your mic uh, there, Marov. I think you've got a problem. Um, so the, the short version is you, you've probably all seen the, the video about the feature. Um, there have been a couple of very good blog posts about it. Um, but uh, is, is my voice coming through clearly? Do we have a general yeah, problem here? You're good. Sounds good to me. Okay. Pause. All right. Great. Um, so uh, the um, but the uh, one of the design considerations that that you should all be aware of is that this is a feature that you can all integrate um, without any problem. Uh, the all of the actual connections to Facebook. All of the handling of the requisite authentication tokens and and permissions and relationship with Facebook itself is all handled server side. Um, so the code that's in the release candidate viewer is something you can integrate so that you can also make this feature available in in, in whatever uh, you know on whatever schedule you you would like to. Um, so. Uh, that's all there. Um, your porting it doesn't doesn't mean that you have any any special relationship with Facebook or that or that um, or that any if any of the user's Facebook information is available to you as as viewer vendors. Um, one question for me about it. Um, how soon will it be out to everybody on the uh, SL viewer? Well, the, right, the answer to that is the usual answer is that we, we don't know. Um, the, I mean, the whole, the whole uh, logic of our current release scheme is that we put lots of things out there and then we promote the one that seems like it's in the best shape or that is the least dangerous or is the most urgent um right 
it 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 probably won't be next week, uh, but in theory it could be, um, just because it won't have had very much time to bake. On the other hand, it's getting a lot of use. Uh, um, a lot a lot of people have uh, so that 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 one's packing in a lot of hours. It, it, it looks as though a lot of people have gone to get it on purpose, uh, as opposed to just waiting to be picked for the for the um, right. So we're we're looking at that all that stuff. Um, so and and right now we've got four candidates, four candidates, uh, you know, uh, and SL Share is one of the newer ones. So um, they they're all holding up reasonably well. Um, so it'll be. Uh, you know, we'll we'll have a meeting next week to decide whether one of one of them gets promoted, and then we'll respin all the rest, and maybe add another one. I don't know. Not sure what the what the story on that is. So, if if I had a guess, somewhere between two weeks and a month from now. But just to review what I I hope is the understanding. Um, you know, you should not be porting features from things that have not, uh, from Linden code bases and repositories into your re release, your normal release viewers until it has at least reached the release candidate stage. At that point, I consider it fair game. Um, so, uh, you know, if you, if you want to do something before we've made it the default viewer, that's, that's okay as long as it's a, a as an RC. Um, you do run the risk that we'll discover some big problem and, and make important changes or that you'll be doing uh, merges um, in a different order than we are and therefore have some different sort of problems than we have. Uh, right, no, it's all 100% it's all opt-in. Um, Yeah, I can see where it'll be a very uh, popular feature. So. Yeah, I've been meaning to try it out, but I've I've been testing other viewers at the moment. I I, I think it'll be it'll be fun. I'm I'm kind of looking forward to the reaction of my um, non Second Life friends, which is nearly all of them, um, to what my uh, my avatar looks like when I when I when I got this job. I I posted a and got asked to pick a Linden name, I posted the, you know, and asked all my Facebook friends for help with it. So they all know that what I ended up with, but, uh, I don't think any of them, or hardly any of them have ever seen my avatar. So, um, <clears throat> um okay. Other Facebook, uh, SL share issues. So this new feature is going to require that everybody has a Facebook account or is this going to create an account for some uh, user of Second Life? No, it allows you to to do things with an existing Facebook account. It doesn't require that you have one and it certainly doesn't create any. Well, that's good. No, there's no connection between the profile, the, the, the in Second Life profile feeds and the Facebook feed. They have no relationship at all.
uh, in in theory, one could probably build a viewer that did that, but I, I, we're not planning on it. As, as near as I can tell, there, there for every person who thinks that it would be, you know, a, a disaster and a nightmare to out themselves by exposing their second life on Facebook, there's more or less exactly one who thinks that connecting the two would be wonderful. Um, that's why we made it opt-in. Anybody who wants to do it can do it, and anybody who doesn't want to do it doesn't need to worry about it. Right. So it's a standalone facility. I plan to use it once once it's merged into the viewers I'm I'm running. At the moment I've been mostly running the snowstorm viewer. Just, I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything about the branch I'm trying to get out. Maroff, probably better that you attempt to answer any of these in writing. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Okay, are, are we collectively well enough that we can resume? Seeing a lot of people not on board. Yeah, voice was being a bit slow here in the beginning.
Wow. Appreciate the value of the um, of the suggestion that we make it possible to limit uh, parcel or region access to accounts over some n days old. But of course, as a viewer developer, I can't do a thing about that. Hey, you, you can go talk to uh, Blake. Uh, he's he's good in that kind of thing. Yeah. So let's see where were we on our agenda. Uh, let's try to try to get back to what we were supposed to be doing. Um, I think the brake pad was next on the agenda. Yeah. So Google brake pad. Um, that that branch is um, Aura is working on that. And she has bumped up the version of BrakePad that we're integrating and is doing a bunch of work on uh, sort of how BrakePad is invoked from the rest of the viewer and um, it, putting, putting as much of it as possible into another process, doing as many things as possible when you, at, at viewer startup time rather than when a crash is detected. Um, generally doing things to try to increase the reliability of our getting crash reports and the fidelity of the information that's in them. So, um, uh, am I? I can turn my mic level down a bit. Where is it sound? Okay. Um, so uh, there's there's nothing especially uh, rocket science in, in that branch. Um, I don't think it will be promoted real quickly. There, we're still uh, doing a lot of research to try to compare what we're getting uh, in crash reports to what we're hoping to get. Um, so I, I expect that one to have a, a, a couple more spins. Um, the snowstorm branch, uh, the major feature in that one is the request teleport thing that uh, Jonathan Yap implemented, which I think is very cool. Um, and that's doing very well in the in the uh, release tracking. So there's a reasonable chance it will be promoted pretty soon. Um, and the maintenance branch has just a boatload of bug fixes. So... Uh, Lots of stuff going on there, including, um, uh, you know, well, they've got, they've got a, a, and they've got a couple more coming, the release candidates coming that are behind that one. So uh, the maintenance team had developed quite a large backlog of stuff that needed integrating uh, while we were, uh, while we were going slowly. Uh, and so there's a lot of fixes in that one. Um, So those are those are the big ones at the moment. Um, uh, yeah, animation interfaces. I I have not made much progress on that. Um, 
basically all the people that would would need to be involved in that discussion have been involved in other things, um, primarily the interest list thing and 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 some other stuff. Um, so uh, I don't I don't really know how much progress, how quickly we're going to be able to make progress on on that. Um, the uh, the the one thing we might be able to do is to basically provide viewers this the ability to do the same things that that scripts can do to animations only without having to go through the monkey business of creating a a, a, a bridge um, a, a script bridge um, that that might not turn out to be too difficult um, so uh, and of course what I'm <laughs> What I'm discovering, and which probably won't surprise very many of you, um, the uh, is that every time I bring up the subject of animations anywhere, and that fact gets reported, I get inundated with emails from people telling me about how I should change the animation, the fundamental animation system. So, um, just to let people know, fundamental problem changes are 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 wildly unlikely at this point um, so that's that's just not really on the agenda um, but that skipped a couple of items uh, on our list here so I want to back up um, I, I will I will continue fiddling with uh, trying to figure out exactly what it would take to develop uh, a, a, an animation <laughs> Uh, an, an animation uh, influencing interface for viewers to use, um, but that that's going to be kind of a slow activity uh, for a while. Um, the uh, <laughs> um, let's see, interest list uh, as as I have been saying for several weeks now, there there is an interest list viewer in the wings uh, that keeps. Not quite passing QA. Um, yeah, maybe it has been months, um, and uh, and that's that's out there, and it's it has not been forgotten about. People are continuing to do work on it, and um, sooner or later you'll see it. That's really all I can. People said very positive things about it this week, but that's happened before too. Um, uh, and I did have a talk with Baker when I was in California recently. Uh, was it last week or the week before? Um, and, uh, and, and he thinks he's really close to having the, the, the group bands stuff working. So, uh, and he promises to come join us as soon as he's, got viewer code that isn't crashy and terrible um, and and t and talk with you about it uh, so I know you're all eager to get that one um, uh, but and and he's he, it's it's still out there um, it's not definitely not been a set aside um, uh, and let's see, I don't know that we've got much in the way of updates from server-side appearance. They are doing a bunch of a bunch of cleanup work both on the back end and on the uh, and and in work that will eventually appear in the viewer. Um, the biggest piece of that uh, that I have been told to tell you about is that there's a new set of APIs been developed for the inventory service um, that essentially aggravate, aggregates some operations that are currently multiple things into a, a smaller set of more powerful uh, APIs so that you can do things um, uh, in, in a single REST API interaction that currently take more than one so um, 
that's and uh, they thought that they were almost ready to come talk with you about it today, but it turns out that they aren't. So they're not, and uh, I'd say there's better than even odds that we'll have them next our next meeting um, to come talk about that. And that's actually going to affect you know all kinds of inventory operations, not just the ones that are used by them. Uh, are going to break existing implementations? No, the existing or? the existing API will continue to exist, um, but there will be these new, more powerful interfaces that will actually be better to use for most purposes. Yeah, AIS v3, that's exactly what we're calling it. So, um, it, 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 from, from what little technical description I've gotten it actually seems like you know somebody took a look at and um, kind of did things the way we should have done them in the first place so hopefully that will be a big help but at, at, at present um, most of the problems that we're seeing with server-side appearance are, are actually inventory related problems so um, that's where a lot of the work is going on, uh, because of course, as you know, it's all driven by what's in in your current outfit folder. Um, Outside of that, server side appearance has been looking pretty good, actually. Uh, it's been a lot smoother than uh, I think anybody really was expecting. Well, it we we tried real hard to make that as uh, as smooth a roll as it could possibly have been, and I I, I think that uh, I think we we succeeded. In fact, I, I've actually had a an interesting situation where people have come to me asking for server side appearance in the viewer because uh, they didn't actually notice having any particular issues, so they thought we didn't have it. Which I thought was quite amusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that's a that's a nice kind of complaint to get, actually. Um. Anyway, I I don't think the next round of of server side appearance changes are are imminent. I think there's you know, significant amount of work other than that, the uh, new inventory API, um, which, uh, which will be, will be coming uh, real soon now. Yeah, so the, the cellular thing is much more likely actually, um, really HTTP problems uh, or related network issues um, and uh, um, I, I don't I, I we can hope that our continuing work on HTTP will will have beneficial effects on that um, Monty do we have any updates on the the uh, the slow roll of HTTP problems and issues and fixes. Oop, there we go. The specific case of um, uh, wireless and tethers, or uh, just the uh, the mesh stuff that's prepared. Yeah, just in general. Uh, you know, I mean, we've been doing yep. incremental changes. Uh, you want to give us an update on that? Okay. The incrementals are. Um, Let's see, two days ago, two weeks ago, Dart Sim 229 went out and that had the server side changes that enabled the new um, capability. Uh, the new viewer that's using it is ready for IQA. We're actually going over the test plans with the QA team right now, and that needs to get published as, uh, well, get through QA. Published as a release viewer, a release candidate, and also probably a project viewer, and just haven't organized that piece yet. Um, so the um, 
Uh, it's just a matter of cranking the head on the process at this point. It looks good. It's been very stable for me. I removed, in addition to the bitch view work, dozens of thread races out of the yellow mesh repository code. There are more left, um, but it is more stable than it has ever been, I think, I believe. Um, and the performance is looking good. We're doing a lot more with a lot less connections, and um, it's ready to co It's ready to push. One change that is coming uh, do is that I have been changing libcurl. Um, I'm actually going to go out the door, switching libcurl over to stop using C Aries and use a threaded resolver library. This is going to be the experimental part of the release candidate to see how that actually works in the field. Um, the libcurl people always are pushing C Aries, but the truth is it hasn't kept up as the main big platforms have a change and they start doing more and more sophisticated things. And I'm really hoping this gets rid of all our DNS problems forever and for everybody. On the tethered thing, um, one moment while I get some stuff going. There is a um, active and lively discussion going on in the forums, if people aren't aware of it. Um, that's right. Um, so, user disclaimer from Lyndon is that we don't support wireless, blah, 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 blah. It's still 1995. Um, but we are interested in these problems. As I say, it does seem to have evoked a new behavior, and the behavior seems to be something to do with our vent, not vendors, but the various carriers. They're messing with HTTP, and um, nobody has a solution for this other than beat all the vendors into a body pulp. But um, if people want to comment or have ideas or do experiments, Please participate in the forum thread. That's it for Monty. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's that's great stuff. And uh, I have particular interest in watching our improving use of HTTP. So, I think that pretty much covers the stuff on the agenda. Oh, no, sorry, there were the other the questions down at the bottom. So, uh, do Linden Lab have any stats for the percentage of sessions that have advanced lighting mode, also known as deferred rendering, available? And yes, I do. I got stats. Um, let me find them. Um, yeah, so a, a couple of relevant bits of uh, <laughs> a couple of relevant bits of stuff. Um, this, it, it, from my point of view, the, this whole business of advanced lighting mode and who who uses it and who doesn't um, is uh, is motivated by. The question of who who can see materials, um, because of course that's that's the big project that we just drove through the snowstorm process, um, and um, there's there's actually another question uh, related to that, which is you know who's using materials and how much of it is getting used, and that is is actually pretty interesting. Um, we're now fast approaching. A third of regions have at least one materials-enhanced thing on them. Uh, I mean, we we don't. It, it wouldn't be that that's uh, dramatically faster than mesh got to that point, for example. Um, so I I think that's pretty cool, and um, the number of avatars that are wearing a materials-enhanced object is also growing, although it's a much smaller percentage at this point. Um, but it's steadily, steadily climbing. Um, so uh, that, I think, is an interesting number. Um, right now, uh, the percentage of, um, let's see. So the numbers I got were uh, the percentage of users with advanced lighting mode on um, It, on a on a graphics card that 
we think can support it. We we filtered out the people who have it on on class one and class two um, cards because that's just almost certainly a spectacularly bad idea. Um, is uh, just just under twenty percent now um, who have it turned on. Um, the percentage of users who have it turned off who should be used is is, is conversely just over 80 percent um well so i did a little i did a little poking around and both singularity and uh no that's from all viewers uh, all viewers that report the statistics um and and that's why I, where i was just going with that which is that um, my understanding, having poked at it a little bit as earlier today, uh, is that both Singularity and Firestorm essentially always leave it turned off by default. Um, and uh, I'd like you to think about whether or not that's actually the correct thing to do, um, especially given that what you're doing is um, um, is is disabling the ability to see. Right, advanced lighting mode, I meant, um, deferred rendering. Um, what, uh, according to our performance measurements, people with class five cards actually get better FPS if they have ALM turned on, if they have rendered, deferred rendering on, than if they don't. Um, Um, yeah, we're we're one of the things we're doing is looking, trying to get performance numbers um, out, and the 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 effect of turning and and measure what the effect of turning uh, advanced lighting mode on is. It's not real terrible on class four cards. I don't have the numbers in front of me. Um, uh, in percentage terms. It's it, it, it it's not awful, um, yeah. So that's another thing about about this, right? So advanced lighting mode used to be labeled lighting and shadows, but actually turning on shadows is a separate control. And um, in 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 my experience, well, so. One of the things I suggest that we do is n is stop using adjectives when describing the performance impact, and start using numbers, right? And I think we should I think we should collectively start trying to figure out some actual numbers. And I'm going to be spending some time on this, uh, but of course I'm going to be testing our viewer, not yours. Um, uh, I don't remember what the what the what the cutoff number is um, well I'm I'm trying to get the fact that you don't get these stats fixed uh, so we're getting we're getting new um, we're getting all of our old well we're getting the useful old performance reports and hardware stats reports ported over to our new much 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 better statistics system um, and when those and and one of the things that I've been pushing hard for, and so far nobody is pushing back, um, is that basically I should be able to get the same numbers for your viewers that we get for ours. Um, so all the all the reports are being um, are being uh, written in a way that allows me to um, filter them by viewer. Um, and, and get uh, get get statistics. I'll be able to share with you about what the performance you know that people are getting on different things is. Um, yes, your it, it is true that we we different people will have different opinions about what an acceptable frame rate is. Um, I think what it would be useful to to do is to be able to say you know with this class of card you can expect a frame rate of X uh, with these options, um, and with that, or or at least the typical the typical 
performance that people get with this class of cards is X. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's certainly true that different people have different have different expectations um, and different thresholds. Uh, lots of the time I spend in Second Life is sitting around in meetings um, where people are not moving around very much and uh, the scenery is relatively static. And so I can turn my graphics options way up and it's still fine because, because in fact, 10 FPS. I don't. Another thing I do to keep from being sensitive to uh, the frame rate is that I don't keep to keep it on, keep the display of what it is up all the time. So having having the number go down bother doesn't bother me um, because I don't see the number. Uh, but uh, you know, so and, and in fact, for me that works just fine um, because of what it is I'm doing and 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 how sensitive I am. Obviously, if what you're doing is playing action games or racing or or uh, um, or combat or or even probably dancing, um, you know your your um, your tolerance for a, a lower frame rate is probably going to be significantly different from for me. Right. Uh, right. So you know maybe maybe twenty would be uh, a more appropriate threshold, but that's actually something I think we ought to. We ought to, um, if what we do is talk about things in terms of what the numbers are, um, right, I have a new desktop uh, somewhere in shipping on the way to me at the moment that, it, you know, they gave me a, a heavy-duty video card and, and, uh, and, and lots and lots of memory, so I expect that I'll get hugely better frame rates on that than I get on my on the Mac I use for development. <laughs> I'll do that sometime, Tanya. Um, so, uh, but of course, then there's there's also the fact that, you know, we have people that complain when their frame rate drops from 140 to 70, right? Oh, that was a 50% hit on my frame rate. Well, you know, you can't see the difference between... 140 and 70 because your eyes only see 60. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I mean, people, that's where, that's where the people who keep the number displayed get ridiculous, right? Yeah, your monitor only does 60. And the reason your monitor only does 60 is that your eyes only do 60. That's where that number came from. <laughs> so, yeah, they'll, they'll claim to notice the difference. I bet they can't oh, tell the difference if you take the number off the display. Can, you can see uh, the difference between 60 and 70, but, you know, there's no way beyond that. And that's yeah, just, you know, the very few individuals. There's, there, right, I'm sure, because everything is, is a bell curve. But there's, but, but there's nobody out there that can see the difference between 80 and 100. I mean, there just aren't. Yeah. Right? I mean, flies could see that. Um yeah, but frame rate and screen refresh is something else. People on the internet don't know I'm a fly. <laughs> um, but um, but a anyway, so uh, it, you know that's that's all something that we're, we're going to have to work on. But I, th I think it would actually be helpful to all of us to begin to, um, number one, pay, pay more attention to this uh, in the sense that uh, we're, we're really um, driving, driving specific improvements. Um, and I would be delighted to have people look at specific issues that they think are performance impacts. Um, I'm going to be trying to put together a, a systematic way of us doing testing, at least on the cards that we have in 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 house and on hand, um, which is not, you know, not a, a zillion of them, and is not um, and is not four, right? So it's it's somewhere in between in between there, um, and uh, I want to try and get some reasonably controlled experiments in place um, yeah the other thing that I'd be very interested in hearing suggestions for contributions for would be 
um, and this is something I've, I've brought up before, is right now we have, you know, a few different kinds of indicators that are scattered here and there around the, around the UI and some of them buried in the, in the advanced and developed menus about what your performance actually is. Um, and then we also have lots of little controls you can tweak about what, what your, what your performance does. Um, I'd really like to see some discussion about can we make tools for viewers to, for users that integrated into the viewer that allow allow you to try to deduce what is it about my current environment that's causing me a performance problem, and or and or what is it about my settings that are causing me a performance problem, right? I I might just uh, point out that um I have actually gone through the process of walking users for using the uh, fast timers console and. It's very useful, the fast timers, but oh my god, it's so complicated to actually explain to users how to deal with that. So right, I'd actually that's say a... a good starting point is from fast timers in the way that um, something that's actually more sane for a user to understand. Well, what I would what what I would say to that is um, the data that fast timers is using is probably one of the inputs, some of the data. Is, is one of the inputs that you would want this sort of expert system for performance tuning to be looking at, but there's no way that we can ever teach enough users to make a difference um, how to look at the Fast Timers console and get anything at all out of it, other than, oh, wow, I'm, this is really I'm, complex, right? I'm, I'm not saying uh, that from that perspective. I'm actually just thinking from a UI design or at least a, a intelligent design, you can actually, for example, you say, start recording here. Okay, start recording here. What's the difference? And it actually tells you the difference rather than, oh, um, there's all these bars and all these numbers. I have no idea what's happening. And right. But that's pretty much what I was getting down to. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of coming at it from two directions, and I'm, these are maybe two entirely different projects. That uh, one is, um, you know, how could I figure out which of the which of the uh, settings I fiddle with in some environment I'm interested in getting performance in make a difference, right? Um, how much is it going to make a difference for me to turn shadows off? How much is it going to make a difference for me to turn my draw distance down? Um, you know, and so on. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and give me some way to, to measure, you know, what was, what was the effect, uh, for a given set of things. And, um, uh, and then the other is, um, how can I do some assessment of and limits on how much um, features of my environment have an impact on my performance? I mean, I, I'm gonna I saved the log file from the from the the crash I had during our little griefer attack because I'm gonna go back and try and figure out what the heck was going on because it, what actually happened for me and I, I from what I saw in chat for some of you too, was that my system got dragged down to the point where I basically had to had to kill the viewer so that I could call for help, right? Yeah, well, graphics crasher is a pretty broad brush, right? I'd like to know um, more specific, more specifically. Um, well, it's not just NVIDIA cards because I don't have an NVIDIA card. I have an, an AMD, so. Uh, what operating system are you on, by the way? Uh, OS X 10.8. Okay. Um, so it has a pretty old uh, AMD card and therefore driver. Yeah, so, you know, I, I want to try and track down that thing because they, first of all, because they've been doing it to me a lot. So I'd love to have an experiment. Right. Okay. 
Well, um, here's a question. Does anyone actually have a copy of this object? Uh, I don't know, but I'll check with the support people. Yes, hands up, all you griefers, yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we need to... Uh, yeah, I'm sure we can, I'm sure we can find one. Okay, I have another meeting that I'm supposed to be at, actually. I just got pinged. So this is not a, a secret announcement meeting. It's, in fact, it's go talking about viewer crashing. Um, so uh, I, have to, I have to book, but I will see you all soon, I hope. Thanks, Oz. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, Oz.